Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Robert here, and guess what? Yep, I'm finally going to do that Nickelodeon rant that I've been saying that I was going to do for a really long time. So, here it is. Okay, let's get started with this rant. Um, okay, originally Nickelodeon was called the Pinwheel Network, which began in 1977, and it lasted till 1979. The Pinwheel Network was then relaunched as Nickelodeon on April the 1st, 1979. Eric Zinn, a New York director-designer, completely changed Nick. He rebranded Nickelodeon, creating a new identity, logos, the look, and feel. In February of 2009, it was announced that Noggin and the End would be rebranded as Nick Jr. and Teen Nick. Later in May, it was announced that Nick Magazine would be discontinued. And in July, after 25 years of having the same logo, they decided to change it. So, literally, this Eric Zinn guy ruined Nickelodeon. He completely ruined Nickelodeon. Well, he's not the only one who ruined Nickelodeon. The other person who ruined Nickelodeon is named Dan Schneider. He's a producer, and some of the shows that he's produced... It were Kenan and Kel, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and recently iCarly and Victorious. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like Kenan and Kel, The Amanda Show, and Drake and Josh. Those are excellent shows. I really like those shows. They are very enjoyable to watch. However, Dan Schneider started going downhill when he created Zoe 101. And now, he is producing those pieces of shit teen sitcoms, iCarly and Victorious. And the current programming on Nickelodeon is Spongebob Squarepants, iCarly, The Penguins of Madagascar, Fanboy and Chum Chum, The Fairly Odd Parents, Super Ninjas, Planet Sheen, Bucket and Skinner's Epic Adventures, Victorious, Big Time Rush, House of Anubis, Power Ranger Samurai, T-U-F-F -F Puppy, and The Troop. Okay, I'm going to try and cover all of these. I think I have enough time to cover them all, considering the fact that YouTube has increased its time limit. So, yeah, I'll be able to cover each and every one of these shows. I'll probably go into more detail on some of the shows, and on other shows I won't be as detailed. So, get ready to, uh, listen to this rant on all these different shows. Okay, I'm going to start with iCarly. iCarly is a teen sitcom. The plot of the show is that Carly and Sam, who are best friends, act funny at a school talent show, and this really tech-savvy, nerdy kid named Freddy, um, tapes it and posts it online without their permission. And then all the people online, the online audience, demands that they give them more funny videos. And so they start the webcast known as iCarly. <sighs> okay. And the main stars of iCarly is Carly Shea, who start, is, starred by, is played by Miranda Cosgrove. Sam Puckett, who's played by Jeanette McCurdy, Freddie Benson, who's played by Nathan Kress, and then there's Spencer Shea, who is Carly's older brother, and then there's Gibby, the chubby, freaky kid who runs around with his shirt off, which is really disgusting. Now, this show is a teen sitcom. That's all I can really say about it. It's just like every other teen sitcom. Crap. Crappy crap crap. It's full of stupid jokes, stupid situations, and they do the weirdest things ever. Like seriously, for their show, they it seems like they're trying too hard to be funny, and then it's not even funny. And then some of the things they do are disgusting. Like I said, Gibby, that one fat chubby kid runs around with his shirt off. Oh, oh, and don't even get me started on all the guest stars that are coming onto the show, like Fred, Fred Fielhorn, guest starred on the show. Oh, God. And 
recently, uh, on the newest episode of iCarly, the guest star on the new episode of iCarly is Michelle Obama, which proves that Michelle Obama isn't very serious about politics, considering the fact that she has enough time to go on to a stupid teen sitcom and play this ridiculous role. <sighs> so, in conclusion, iCarly, it started off good. It was okay in the beginning. I didn't mind it, but yeah, now it's pretty much gone so far downhill, it's not even funny. And the next thing I'm going to cover is Victorious, another teen sitcom slash musical, which begs me to ask the question, why do they have teen sitcoms on a little kid's show? And the fact that it's a musical makes it even worse. Now, the plot of this sitcom is that a girl named Tori gets accepted into Hollywood, Hollywood art school, a school for talented teens. Tori finds her place while getting into crazy situations. And the other characters in the show besides Tori is Andre Harris, a musical prodigy who becomes Tori's best friend after helping her to um, stay in the school and helps her to find her talents. Thanks a lot, Andre. And her other friends are Robbie Chaparro, a socially awkward ventriloquist who carries around a puppet named Rex Powers. Rip off of Austin Powers, anyone? And he believes that this puppet is alive. Yeah, um, that's not completely psychotic at all. And then the other characters are Jade West, a sarcastic mean girl who has a love-hate relationship with Tori. Um, Cat Valentine, sweet, innocent, and a sweet, innocent, and naive girl who is somewhat dim-witted and bipolar due to the fact that she has mood swings. Huh, who does that remind me of? Oh yeah, that's right, that one London Tipton character from uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And then the final character to wrap it all off is Beck Oliver, the laid-back, stereotypical pretty boy who is Jade's boyfriend. Wow, this cast sounds very familiar. Probably because I've heard of them from every other teen sitcom. This show is a piece of crap. Okay, next on to Big Time Rush. The stars of Big, Big Time Rush are Kendall Schmidt, who plays as Kendall Knight, Carlos Pina Jr., who plays as Carlos Garcia, James Maslow, Mar who plays as James Diamond, and Logan Henderson, who plays as Logan Mitchell. Huh. So they all kept their first names, yet they changed their last names. Hmm, where does this sound familiar? Oh yeah, that's right, Jonas L.A. The Jonas Brothers kept their first names, but then they changed their last names. I wonder why. Anyways, the setting of this place is Palmwood's Hotel and Palmwood's School, which are both intended for aspiring actors and musicians. And the plot of the show is that their band, who, which is led by the Kendall guy, who was offered a contract, but he only agreed to sign the contract if his family and friends could come along with him to the Palmwoods place. And so they move to their new home and they have a whole bunch of wacky adventures and a great time. <sighs> Wow, that sounds familiar. Oh yeah, that's right. It sounds like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Jonas L.A., and Sweet Life on Deck. Why are you ripping off Disney Channel, Nickelodeon? I thought you were better than that. God. Anyways, and during the show, they are constantly in conflict with their overbearing overbearing, shrill, and caring producer, which doesn't make any sense how their producer is shrill and overbearing yet still caring, 
and his well-meaning assistant, and they are also constantly at odds with Arthur Griffin, who is the CEO of their fictional corporation, RCM CBT Global Net Sanoid. What is up with this name? This is a weird-ass name for a corporation. Anyways, so this ex this eccentric billionaire CEO, Arthur Griffin, who he keeps on um, threatening the integrity the integrity of their music division, which doesn't make sense. Why would the CEO of the company be trying to destroy the music se section of his own organization? That doesn't make any freaking sense. Anyways, and that's not the only thing that doesn't make sense. They are also constantly at odds with uh, this guy named Mr. Biter, Mr. Bitter. I've never seen the show, so I don't really know. I'm just going off what I found from Wikipedia. So anyways, Mr. Bitter, the Palms, Palmwoods um, manager, he covets them for their apartment, and he continually searches for reasons to evict them. What? What? He's the manager of the hotel that they're living at, and yet he's angry at them for having a uh, apartment at his hotel and so he's trying to get rid of him what that doesn't make any freaking sense oh yeah I, I, oh oh my gosh i'm jealous of you even though you're my customer i'm jealous of you why would you try and evict your freaking customers you goddamn moron what the hell this show makes no freaking sense at all. <sighs> Whatever. Big Time Rush is just a ripoff of Jonas Brothers and pretty much every other sitcom show. So in conclusions, so in conclusion, it's just a piece of crap. But you know, Jonas Brothers also reminds me of another sitcom that used to be on Nickelodeon. Um, the Naked Brothers Band. What? Why would you name your band that? Why? Just. Just why? Why would you put the word naked in your band's name? It it doesn't make any sense. It it just doesn't. <sighs> well, anyways, so yeah, Big Time Rush is kind of like a gayer version of the Naked Brothers band. Now for Bucket and Skinner's epic adventure. Um, I didn't really do very much research on this sitcom, but to me, it sounds exactly like the one Disney show, Zeke and Luther. Seriously, this show sounds exactly like Zeke and Luther. It really does. Well, and that's pretty much all there is to say about this show. It's just a copycat of Zeke and Luther. Again, Nickelodeon, why are you ripping off Disney Channel? And next, I'm going to cover Spongebob. Well, Spongebob is actually a really good show. I mean, it's not as good as what it used to be, but it's still pretty enjoyable. They're still coming up with a lot of really crazy, funny, wacky episodes, and it's just enjoyable to watch because it's funny, yet it's not retarded. So, yeah, Spongebob is a good show. Um, good job, Nickelodeon. Keep it up. Keep making shows like Spongebob. And try and stay away from the teen sitcoms, they're not really doing it for you. Now I'm going to cover Penguins of Madagascar, and I'm not really going to go over very much of Penguins of Madagascar, because I haven't really seen the show all that much, and uh, I don't really have a problem with it. Besides the fact that it's CGI, I don't really like CGI all that much, but Penguins of Madagascar is actually okay, even for CGI. It's pretty funny. Um, the penguins are pretty funny how they're always sneaking around doing, you know, ninja penguin spy stuff. So, anyways, yeah, Penguins of Madagascar, not very, um, not, not, not really all that bad, actually. I actually like it. Now I'm going to cover Fanboy and Chum Chum. Actually, you know what, screw it, I'm not gonna cover it, because I already know, this show is fucking shit.
five freaking seconds. That's how long I've seen this show. And in those five short seconds, I saw probably the stupidest, most retarded scene I have ever seen for any freaking show in the history of forever. This show is stupid. It's incredibly dumb. Don't watch it. Ever. I'm not really going to say anything for House of Anubis, because I haven't really seen it, and I haven't even really seen very many commercials of it. And the commercials of it that I have seen, well, let's just say it looks like a Harry Potter ripoff. So, I don't even want to try watching this, or even doing any research into it, because I can kind of predict how it will turn out. So, yeah. Um, actually, I think I'm going to stop right here, because, I mean, I know that YouTube has, um, increased their time limit, but I don't want my videos to be too long, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to continue on another video. I'm going to do a part two, and maybe even a part three, because I have a lot to cover, so, yeah, I'm going to stop here for now. Okay, see you guys later.